back to the comments section. I'm Brett Cooper. I am very excited because Sports Brett sports. is back today. We are talking about soccer, but we are not talking about the U.S. Women's Soccer League, which I know was a you know big topic of conversation a couple of weeks ago because they blew their game and then they were angry and crying about feminist things, and I do not care. I did not do an episode about it because they pissed me off, but I am going to talk about who won the World Cup because drama happened at the World Cup, which happened last weekend, that has the Spanish government, basically all of FIFA and the online Twitter warriors up in arms together. And it is all surrounding one celebratory kiss. Before we get into this, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. So last weekend, Spain beat England in the FIFA World Cup for women's soccer. And in the heat of the moment, in the heat of all the celebrations and the excitement, the Spanish Soccer Federation president, Luis Rubiales, did something that might have cost him his career. He kissed his star player, whose name is Jenny Hermano. Here's a picture of it. This is the screenshot that has been going around the internet for the last week. And people are now calling this sexual assault. And the player said that it was a impulse-driven, sexist, out-of-place act without any consent. She also said that she was a victim of aggression. And now it seems like Spain is catching up to 2017 America's Me Too movement as Say Acabo is trending in the country, which translates to it's over. I probably butchered that. Say Acabo. I think that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, it means it's over. Here's a headline about that. Luis Rubiales, the kiss that started Spain's Me Too movement. And under this hashtag, Say Acabo, we Women are sharing stories of being mistreated by men, obviously very similar to what we saw here in the States after Alyssa Milano's fateful 2017 tweet. Now that you've gotten some context about all of this, let's watch this horrifying assault on camera. Here we go. The president of the Spanish Football Federation has been slammed for this. Luis Rubiales kissed World Cup winner Jenny Hermoso on the lips during the medal ceremony. Maybe I'm missing something here in this 15 second interaction, but they just won the freaking World Cup. They are on a high. They're celebrating. He was probably caught up in the moment. That was not like a makeout session. That was a, oh my God, I'm so excited. That was a peck. If you see a longer version of it, you'll see the camera linger on him and he's like laughing and smiling and jumping like he's very, very happy. Now, Jenny, the player, she might not have liked that interaction, which is totally fine. That's her prerogative, but I would not call it assault. That diminishes what true sexual assault actually is. Now, I have had plenty of interactions with people who are a bit more touchy-feely than me because I'm really not touchy-feely unless I'm very close with you. And I've walked away being like, oh, that was a bit much. That was kind of interesting, but oh well. But I don't go out and try to ruin their careers and get them fired. And that's just my take. Now, if more information comes out about this guy, I am happy to have my mind changed. But this just seems like a bit much and a bit of a witch hunt, in my opinion. Now, after all of that happened, while they were still playing right after the game, Jenny, the star player went live on Instagram. She was in the locker room. They were celebrating. It was just her being like, oh my God, we won. This is so exciting. And somebody across the room from her asked her about the kiss. So there are subtitles on this and it's translated, but this is what she had to say immediately after as she was on a live stream talking to, I think, one of her players, one of her colleagues. <laughs> I feel like that was them screaming because she saw the picture of it. And she's like, oh. She's smiling and laughing. We'll talk about it again. One second. So what was I supposed to do? So she's laughing. They're joking about it. Like this literally reminds me of, you know, being backstage when you're doing community theater. Like I'm trying to think of something in my life where I've been with like a bunch of, you know, girls and we see some photo and we all get together like, oh my God, that's so funny. That guy's so weird. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that happens. Like that's a, a normal thing that happens when you're with a group of people, men or women, something awkward just happens. You're laughing about it. It doesn't really feel that deep. Like the way that she's responding, she's not like shell shocked or triggered. She's smiling because she just won. She looks like she just had a weird interaction with her overly emotional chief president and is joking about it with her team. Like I guarantee we have all been there. The internet is lit up about all of this and a lot has transpired in just this week. Now this was the first tweet I saw about this and this was on the 25th and Pop Base said, Spain's women's football team announced that they will not play another match until Spanish football president Luis Rubiales resigns, which he refuses to do. Rubiales grabbed team member Jenny Hermoso and planted a non-consensual kiss on her lips at the World Cup final. So we went from giggling about it 
it, laughing about it to screw you, we will not play another game unless you were gone because this was so awful and so traumatic. And he was immediately pushed to resign, but he refused because he said this was ridiculous and it was not a big deal. And I agree, but people online are very split. Like one person on TikTok said, I don't know. I was with her first that the kiss was unacceptable, but after seeing the video, she doesn't seem shocked or frozen after it happened. Like, again, I don't think this is triggering. I think we misuse a lot of words like sexual assault and it diminishes what other women have actually gone through, what men have actually gone through. If you have been through a traumatic experience, you do not walk away five minutes later laughing and giggling about it. I'm sorry. Even if you were uncomfortable, that is not being triggered or traumatized by a sexual assault. Somebody else said, if a woman in his position were to kiss a male player after the game, nobody would care and they would call the player a crybaby if he had a problem with it. Nice. Nice. Grow up and get over it. Maybe he shouldn't have done it, but the white knighting is beyond pathetic. Somebody else said, maybe we don't have to make everyone resign if they make a mistake. Crazy idea we've been throwing around for many years now, guys. Somebody said, honestly, I have no idea what the big deal is. It's not like he tried making out with her. It was a quick celebratory peck. People have their panties up in a bunch over nothing. They have their panties up in a bunch about a lot of things. Somebody else said, yeah, but the problem is this isn't your daughter or your family. It's a fully grown woman who you have no relationship with. No, that's like, he has a relationship with her. That's the star player and he is the president of the Spanish Soccer Federation. They obviously know each other. They obviously work together. He has a stake in her winning. Okay, I'm just moving on, moving on. You can't just walk up to someone, kiss them fully on the lips and expect it to be okay. Not really a justification for it, just disgusting to do. Another point, some extra context, is that he was hugging all the players. Picking them up, hugging, cheering, clapping. Like, it was not just her. It wasn't like he was like, I am gonna go give her a non-consensual kiss. There's a lot of stuff happening on the field. Now on Twitter, people have been a lot angrier and a lot more aggressive, which is not surprising at all. Somebody said, it's sexual assault. There was no other thoughts to be had. Another person said, resigning isn't enough. He's got to get put behind bars. Boy, that escalated quickly. For that, touch grass, please. Like, even if you think that was totally inappropriate and you disagree with my take on it, this is not a felony. He did not assault anybody, even if it was wildly inappropriate in somebody else's mind. Twitter sentiment was shared on TikTok by a lot of angry women specifically. I hate the fact that it's the Women's World Cup and I'm talking more about the actions of disgusting men than I am about the incredible accomplishments of these amazing players, but the president of the Spanish Football Federation kissed Jenny Hermoso on the mouth without her consent. So how it works when a team wins the World Cup like Spain did today is that they walk across the stage and there's notable people from their country there to congratulate them and typically they'll just give a quick handshake or a hug. Um, the hug is normal, but the kiss on the mouth is of course assault. It gets even worse because in an interview afterwards when asked about it, Jenny said, yeah, I did not enjoy that. And then you can faintly hear somebody in the back yelling, did he use tongue? The president of the Federation, the man who kissed her, called it two people showing each other a minor show of affection and said it should be ignored. A pat on the back is a minor show of affection. Kissing somebody on the mouth without their consent is sexual assault. And it would come as a surprise to no one that Luis Rubiales already has a pending trial over an alleged assault of a woman in 2017. So this is not the only person on TikTok that is screaming about this, saying that it is, you know, this is literally assault. He deserves to be put behind bars, bringing in his other sexual assault trial, which I looked into a little bit. I can't tell if that is legit or if there is a witch hunt there. I hate being so pessimistic about all of this. And I've done many videos about the US Me Too movement, but it's just disgusting how it is become politicized and how it's less about truth and more about pushing this matriarchal anti-patriarchy agenda because there are so many women that lie there are so many women that exploit this movement and i wish i didn't have to say that but it's true it's been blown out of proportion so i take all of those stories sadly with a grain of salt and i wish that i didn't because i would love to be able to stand up next to women and say yes like i totally believe you but in 2023 you cannot logically say that because men lie and women lie that's just how the world works. But if we are just talking about this scenario, this is just being blown out of proportion. Now, of course, we know that initially Louise refused to resign. And as he was doing that, he also gave a statement. So I have this here. It's in Spanish, but they're subtitles, so it can be translated for us. Aunque se esté vendiendo otra cosa en muchos de los medios, tanto los que están dominados o rindiendo pleitesía al señor Tebas, como los que están rindiendo pleitesía al falso feminismo, que es una gran lacra en este país. Aquí no se está tratando de I knew in that moment when I saw that he talked about false feminism that it was not going to work out for him in women's soccer. <laughs> like, buddy, I think you're in the wrong industry. Es tan grave como para que yo me vaya habiendo hecho la mejor gestión de la historia del fútbol español. ¿Ustedes creen que tengo que dimitir? Pues les voy a decir algo. No voy a dimitir. No voy a dimitir. I love this guy. I've never heard of him before this moment. But that was an absolutely based statement. I've never heard of cancel culture described as a social murder, but that is a good way to put it. And obviously, 
from the response, from all the applause, it seems like there still are people with common sense out there who are not feeding into the propaganda that is being pushed online, which is very positive. Somebody commented under that video and said, everyone is elated. People kiss each other with excitement when they have achieved something great. This is really stupid and unnecessary. Another person said, it looked like a caught up in the moment, quick congratulatory kiss, no malicious or sexual connotations behind it. He probably owes her an apology for an overzealous reaction to their win, but it didn't look like that big of a deal. Sometimes people make too much out of nothing. Now, according to Jenny, the Fed Federation pressured her to defend this president's actions and just let it go. But by that point, the internet had already picked up on the story and on the kiss and sparked this fire. And the Me Too movement was back, baby. It is not 2023 anymore. We are in the heat of 2017 again. It has reached Spain. We are back. I don't want to assume the worst from a woman that I do not know. But considering how she acted immediately after the kiss, like walking off camera, smiling, laughing, that was totally fine. And the way she was laughing on the live stream, I feel like she got caught up in the drama that was brewing online and said, oh yeah, I... I am a victim. I am. This is my moment. Like, yeah, I was. I need to fight back. And actually, this could be very similar to the Michael Orr situation with the blind side story that I talked about last week, where he realized that turning his back on his family could win him some BLM brownie points that, you know, victimhood would pay. Victimhood would bring attention and vengeance or whatever. It's a pattern that we see a lot. But moving on, she obviously did not defend Louise, and instead she posted a statement later that day on August 25th, and she said the thing about how this was an impulse-driven act of sexism and that she was a victim of aggression. You can go on Twitter and you can read her whole statement if you want to. It is four whole pages long, so I'm not going to read it all on camera, but there it is, August 25th. Now, the next day, we had developments. The Federation got upset that Jenny didn't defend him and was leaning into the story, and they tried to retaliate. This is from Pop Base again. He said, the Spanish Football Federation announces that instead of removing President Luis Rubiales, they will take legal action against player Jenny Hermoso, as they claim that she lied about non-consensual kiss. The Federation also says that players have an obligation to play for the national team after 81 female players said that they would not play until Rubiales was removed in solidarity with Jenny Hermoso. And that is all very true. I'm sure they signed a contract. Legally, they must play. Now, I think it's a bit ridiculous that they were going to try to retaliate against her and say that she lied because it doesn't look like she went up to him and was like, yes, please kiss me. Like that, again, was caught up in the moment. It was weird. It was probably awkward. All of this seems totally unnecessary from both sides. Obviously, that tweet their decision did not go over well at all. The internet was very upset at the Federation. So just mere hours later, FIFA, their head honcho, stepped in and Luis Rubiales was officially suspended. FIFA suspends Spanish Football Federation president Luis Rubiales for an initial 90-day period after he kissed player Jenny Hermoso, which she says was non-consensual. And then a couple more details about that. They are suspending him from all football-related activities at a national and international level for 90 days while disciplinary proceedings are underway, deepening a scandal that tainted a historic victory for the women's team. It's not like he's just going to come back after 90 days. They're going to try to discipline him. Maybe he'll be fired. We have no idea. And this is just all stupid. This just seems like a witch hunt. Maybe these players didn't like this guy before. I have no idea. But a man's career and his reputation is being potentially destroyed because people care more about an agenda and an ideology than truth and cultural customs and social behaviors. Like one point that I kept seeing people bring up that I thought was a good point was how in Europe, kissing is very normal. It is a normal greeting. It is a way to show extreme emotion. Somebody said, you guys don't understand European culture. Even CNN ran an article bringing up this point, a country where kissing is a custom reels from a major exception. And the Spanish author, who is from Madrid, wrote that in Spain, kissing is a widely accepted custom. Friends and family do it, whether woman to woman, woman to man, or man to man. It can be lips to cheek or a little kissing sound. There are numerous variants and even strangers greet each other this way. Here's another one from a travel blog where she said, Spaniards and Europeans in general are more friendly and relaxed and touchy. So when you meet someone here, you can give two kisses on the cheek. There you have it more relaxed and touchy. And one thing that not a lot of people brought up, but I saw images of this, is that kissing is also very normal in the subculture of soccer. Like players were kissing players. It was a lot of men kissing each other after they win, coaches and players, and the screen grabs make it look like it's like some emotional, long drawn out thing. But if you watch the videos, it's just like, peck, peck, this is so amazing. This just seems absolutely ridiculous. And like all this drama is going on for no reason. It is totally fine. If you don't want to be kissed, if you don't like that, if you're not a touchy feely type of person, I'm really not that. It kind of weirds me out. Like, I, it's fine. But this was not assault. At most, Louise could have gone directly to Jenny and apologized for making her uncomfortable and causing a scene and saying, I'm so sorry, I didn't know that you didn't like that. I won't do that. But this is just absurd and it is going on for way too long. And the Spanish Me Too movement does not need to start because of this. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the comment section and that you maybe even learned something new. If you have not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode.